Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Well-Centered Woman Podcast. How are you doing, Miss Whitney? I am doing amazing. This is such an honor. My goodness. Um, I feel like we've already been fired up before, before this. Just, whew, he's already here, so. <laughs> amen. Yes, and amen. A Man, I am so delighted to have this conversation with Miss Whitney Spencer, Whitney the beauty chemist, hailing from Little Rock, Arkansas, the <laughs> founder and owner of Crown Hair Solutions, where your mission and your goal is to promote beautiful, healthy, and luxurious hair from the inside out. Amen. So how are you doing today? I am doing really well. I've had a fantastic day. I, it started off just like I just like God runs it. I mean, I'm the owner, but God's the founder, really. To tell you the truth, yeah. He's the one who found this for me. Um, I'm not just saying that. I'm literally live this every day, where God invites people in and they confirm it was saying, I pray to God that I had a person who was going to take care of my hair and you, you, you were confirming that. And so when I hear that, it just confirms more to me that I'm in the right place of my calling, Amen. the right place in line with his purpose. So Amen. it is, I'm always doing great if I'm working in the salon and using my gift for his glory. Amen. That leads right into our next, next question. So by way of a brief background, can you share with our listeners how you were called to work in the area of beauty and chemistry? Just tell us a little bit of background for that. Okay. Um, in the beauty and chemistry, um, I started out, my first career was, uh, I was a chemist, still am, just in a different way. Um, I worked in the lab and I'm just going to be real frank with you. I got laid off. And that broke everything inside of me because I was a very rudimentary person where I went to college, uh, got school paid for, um, I came out with the job, I got a career that was enough to sustain me, not just enough, it was more than enough to sustain me. I did not job hop, I stayed in line, I went through the, the rigorous um, mm -hmm. patterns of the ebbs and the flows that come with um, being in a career and being in the, the line of, of actually danger, just to be honest. I mean, I dealt with hazardous waste chemicals. So, I mean, sometimes I would think like, I might not make it home tonight because someone made a mistake. And so that always ran in the back of my mind. And I know that the spirit heard me because I would also cry when I would get home from my workplace and not because of crying from laziness, just crying from, I'm beyond not happy. Mm -hmm. I feel like I am losing myself. And so to be let go was to be set free. And a lot of people would say, well, that's, that's a, how did you end up being a cosmetologist? It was always in me. It was in me since I was five when I first cut the side of my hair. And I decided, yeah, that looks better. That looks way better. And then, you know, mama did what mamas do. And I got my butt toe up. So <laughs> it was always in me uh, to do hair. I always had an affinity for beauty. Yeah. And so when I was a chemist working in the lab, my breaks, I would think about um, wigs a lot. And my mom, she actually is a radiation therapist. And she works around a lot of cancer patients. She treats a lot of cancer patients. And so I would always ask her when she'd come home, like, what kind of wigs do they bring in? You know, and she's like, oh, girl, there's some real bad ones. And I was like, wow, that sucks. Like, it really, really sucks. So I worked hard on my breaks to think about better looking wigs for cancer patients. And I had my chance while I was still working as a chemist to bless somebody with a wig. And I did there, I did an interview just like we're doing an interview. And funny thing is that interview never got posted. 
It never got posted. And to this day, I'm like, wow, God, you did work in the dark. That was just a priming season for what I'm doing today because it was always something missing, a missing link, and I never could put my fingers on it. So when I was fired, I went through about six months of looking for a job, found a job, went away from Arkansas, spent two months in Florida. And in Florida was my wilderness. And I tell this story to my clients all the time because that's, that's, that's part of my testimony is sometimes you have to go away to get better sometimes yeah. god can't do the work where you're right in it where you're stuck he might pluck you literally from where you are get you by yourself because i was all my friends and family live here i never ever moved from little rock arkansas born and raised yeah. everything that i was surrounded by was just at an arm's length so to move do a completely different career that I had no passion for only to come back I had gotten hired to work at the Pentagon and I was like yeah wow things are looking up and God read my heart and one day I said you know I always did want to go to cosmetology school let me just entertain it while I'm waiting on my assignment for the Pentagon and yeah. I booked a tour, just a tour, just a tour. It was just a tour. It was just supposed to be a tour. I walked Dude. in. <laughs> I could just see people. <laughs> it was just supposed to be a tour, Whitney. It was just supposed to be a tour. That's what my mama mm -hmm. said. My mama said it was just supposed to be a tour. What are you talking about right now? <laughs> what do you mean you want to go back to school? I'm not paying for it. What do you think? No, mm -mm, mm -mm. my mother was livid and I felt like I had fallen in love. Like nobody could tell me that this wasn't where I was supposed to be. And it was, it was God. And that's how you got here. God. It was God, if you ever know what it feels like to fall in love, all of the butterflies, all of the stuttering, all of the sweating under the armpits, all of just the, oh my God. This is oh get.com. Like <laughs> looking around, just, I was your like. Your heart just lifted. Your heart was just like blown. All of my five senses were open, including my nose. Cause I loved all the smells of the hairsprays and the just. It, it, just like, oh, it was an angelic oh, meditation. I can't say, but <laughs> um, so that is what happened, right? That's mm -hmm. what happened. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. And so now you're at this point today in your salon, in your business. And most recently, you know, I've been scoping, you know, I did my little research like I always do. <laughs> you are granted. <laughs> <laughs> you were granted or you were awarded a women, women's empowerment grant through the Women's Foundation of Arkansas. So, you know, you got just all through hearing that voice of God and obeying that and coming into your true heart's purpose. And now you're here. Tell us more about how God favored you in that. So God favored me with that through my clients because it's not just here. Come it's never just here. It's never, first and foremost, it's never just here. The women who I work on are powerful women. They're the celebrities. And I feel like when stylists understand that, that's when you're going to win. Hmm. God is the superstar. They're the celebrity. I was, I talk a lot to my clients of what I'm wanting to do all my passions and they listen and I listen to them back. And one of my clients who works for, uh, who's part of the chamber of commerce, um, sent me a text one day was like, you should apply for this grant. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna apply. A funny thing, I have to tell this side of the story. I was awarded this back in February and I missed it because I got sick. So this is a second chance grant. 
Come on, somebody. He's that means it was so meant for me. It was so meant for me. Even up to the point of somebody else speaking up for me in the room. So it definitely lived out the phrase, your name will enter into rooms that you've never been in. And someone yeah, spoke up for me. It's like, yeah, get her. That That's the one. I vote for her right there. And when she told me that, when she hugged me at that, at that ceremony, she said, I was rooting for you. I was the one who voted for you this whole time. I was like, wow, God, this person has never sat in my chair. So your favor can outdo you because you are being obedient. Your favor will always outrun you. It will always outrun you. It will, it will speak in rooms you've never been in and it will touch lives you'll never even meet. So to receive that favor lets me know that I'm going to keep doing more. God is doing something completely new. Never received a grant like this. Amen. Amen. Um, I love it. Man. I love it. And you know, it reminds me of, we're always looking for the people that we know to give us favor, the people that we know to speak up for us. But this was a woman you did not know, right? You know I her. knew her. You knew her, but she never sat in your chair. She never sat in my chair. And she was not who you thought. No. Yeah. That's how God does. And, you know, oh, we could go down a whole path. But like I said, I did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to know what you found. No, I'm just kidding. But what I found was, I love this quote. You have this listed as one of your favorite quotes. And you, this quote. Chance favors the prepared mind. You really have done you, your homework. I've done my homework. <laughs> you were prepared. Even though it was your second time around, you were prepared for the grand above. So how do you feel like you were mentally, emotionally, and spiritually prepared to receive that? Because you said chance favors the prepared mind. That was chance right there. Do you hear me? That was chance. Hmm. Come on through, Jesus. Your mind. And when I say this, I hope I say this slowly. Your mind will always outdo your paper. Your mind will always outdo your paper. The notes you've written down for this, you've probably wrote them 10 times. The ideas that you have in your head, you've already played them out 10 times. This conversation, I already dreamed this 10 times. Way before I ever met you, everything. And so it's a double entendre when I say that your mind outdoes your paper. It outdoes your money and where your money can stretch you to. Because one thing, that's why it's all about the crown. That's why the business is called Crown. It's not about the hair. This is dead. This is dead. It's not about that. It's about up here. Even the Bible speaks about the crown. God is, is so focused on that because that's where our heart lives. That's where the truth lives. Right here. Right here in our mind. So know. when chance favors the prepared mind, when you prepare yourself with God, when you sit with him, when you ruminate on his thoughts, when you take the time to be humble, when you take the time to fast, when you take the time to pray, your mind is able to see things. And seize opportunities. It seize opportunities. Even though they might seem like an accident. Oh, I just stumbled across it. No, you didn't. Oh, she just sent me that text to say apply for that. That was no coincidence. There's no coincidence. Never a coincidence for a child of God. Never. Nothing. Never. Never. Chance favors their prepared mind, heart, soul. It's more than the mind. You got to be prepared, prepared on a lot of levels, mm -hmm. right? And you talked about the crown, which mm -hmm. leads me to my next question. Right on. 
Yes, Lord. <laughs> now, <laughs> we're almost to my next question. Okay. <laughs> so I love how God is using you in your salon and just this whole progression of your journey and how you're showing up. But I know it wasn't always like this for you. And I remember the time, sometime this time last year, maybe not quite this time last year, but before Christmas, somewhere around Thanksgiving, October, things started looking a little cray cray. And you went through a relationship situation that was a bit dramatic and painful. Mm -hmm. So as you're led to share, if I recall correctly, um, whatever you're willing to share, but can you tell us what was going on in your heart and how God helped you navigate? You're running a business. You're pulled into your calling more. There's an anointing on your life. And then this whole situation, how did you navigate that as a woman of faith? Hmm. This is this is the first time. Um, I'm not emotional about the situation. I am proud of fighting through that. Because where some people would fold, I said no. I'm not gonna fold. I'm gonna lean in harder. I'm going to lean in harder to God and I'm going to do what most people are not always ready to do as soon as it happens. And I was hurt. I was hurt by someone that I put a lot of trust in, someone who I had dreams about. I had dreams of walking down the aisle. And I know that my dreams are powerful. I know that they are confirming dreams and I don't dream lightly. But I didn't know that the Holy Spirit was actually warning me for what I was about to experience. The wedding with no crowd, the proposal with no ring and to sit with someone of importance and they say, he's not ready yet. Those three dreams happened over the summer, only to lead to the ultimate betrayal. I mean, it was a low one. Hmm. I was now my clients. I was now the person sitting in the chair who stopped eating. I was the person whose hair was getting ready to fall out from the level of stress. I was the person whose body was chemically changing on the inside. And I was experiencing the things that women experience, but I was experiencing them on a double level. And I, I screamed out to God, why did you do this to me like this? Why would you let me be in something the questions any woman asks when they are in a yeah. relationship, any woman. And especially when there's betrayal. At betrayal. That level. At, that, at level. that level. Yeah. I knew it was time for the big F word. Forgiveness. Amen. It was time to do a level of forgiving that I've never reached down and done before. I remember being in Miami um, with people who I trust in faith and spending some alone time at the mm -hmm. shore again, because God loves to meet me at the shore. And getting on my knees and praying for him praying for him to be a better father to the new children that he now is going, that are calling him dad. Praying for that he be a good husband for the woman that he chose to propose to and marry. Being a good son because he is with some, he's under a congregation of a pastor. He's a pastor's kid. 
I remember praying for him on those levels because mm -hmm. what he did wasn't of his flesh. It was the spirit that's living within him. Come on now. And I need to pray for his soul to be changed. Come I need to, to pray that God makes him a new man mm -hmm. because there's new mercies every day. New mercies. That took so much grace and so much courage. You know, and a woman is going to listen to this and wonder, I can't forgive. I can't forgive him. He betrayed me, embarrassed me. I feel like a fool. It's all those feelings, right? It is so much. And, you know, in situations like that, it, let me go back to what I looking at looking at this quote, going back to that crown quote quote that you have. You have that quote on your website, right? You say, and it's powerful, your crown has been bought and paid for. All you have to do is wear it. Hmm. All you have to do is wear it. And sometimes, I'm going somewhere with this, sometimes we forfeit our crown and put it down and stop wearing it to chase behind a man who's unworthy of our heart. Sometimes we think a man is a king when he's really a clown in a crown, like Bishop R.C. Blake says. Wow. You know, and so tell me and reflect from all that you said in that situation, now in hindsight, which is always 2020, were you able to see any red flags? Were there any places in that where your crown may have slipped off or got a little wopsided mm -hmm. now that you're back in the on the other side of it? Because see, it was bought and paid for. We just got to wear it. But sometimes you get a little wopsided. Can you, do you recall that? I do recall the signs. Yeah. I do recall the stories mm -hmm. because I have girlfriends. Okay. I have girlfriends. I tell stories too. And then you have your stories that you keep to yourself. And those stories you keep to yourselves are the ones that can hurt you. The ones where, eh, kind of didn't pick up all weekend. You didn't pick up the phone all weekend? I'm only getting texts at night. The little things. The little things. And those I'm are the only... places that start your crown to start slipping. No more dates. No more date nights. No more anything and those red flags were starting to happen more frequently more frequently had happened in the beginning see the thing is i'm gonna be real frank sometimes we give our body away before we give our mind away oh lord well oh lord come on through here we grown today we, we grown, grown today. today this is grown woman talk I mean, if y'all was expecting to be in church, I'm sorry. But sometimes you give your body away before you give your mind away. And I'm definitely a person that I've done that multiple times. Man, I wouldn't be a real woman if I could sit up here and lie and, and say that, you know, um, I didn't. Yeah. Because there was a, a spot in me that I didn't trust God with. I, there were, there's still spots in me that I don't trust God with. And when you don't trust God with, but you'll trust a man with it. Your crown. Our, yeah, your crown starts slipping, right? And it's not that you don't, I didn't have girlfriends to help me get it right back. It's not that I didn't have a mom to help me get it right back. I tilted it myself. I said, I'm a gangster. Let me go on and this, this look good on me. It look good when I wear it to the side. It look good when I cock my head to the side. It look good. Does it? Mm. Does it look good? Because looking good and feeling good ain't always good. No, it's not. Wow. You made a powerful statement. You can give your body before you give your mind. It's so much easier. A lot of times, and again, this is a frank, real woman conversation. It's easier to open our legs than it is to open our hearts. 
Because that's a whole different level of intimacy. That's a whole different level of trust. That's a whole different conversation. But when we do that, we're forfeiting our crown. Laying it down for a man that's not worthy of our hearts or our bodies. Mm. Do you know that your crown is a part of your armor? Mm. He says put on the full armor. We don't think of, we think of it like a helmet. We literally think, and this is new revelation for me too, as I'm speaking this out to you. That's why I said, I was like, she's about to pull something. Your crown is a part of your armor. And with it being tilted to the side. Or taken all the way off. Sometimes you can take it all the way off and put it down and chase behind a man. Let me pull this down and take this off. And what else are you what pulling? I want to do. You take this off first. What, what's next? Come on. We know what's next. Mm. So easy to let me just who this is heavy. Whew, Lord, I just need a fix. Oh, this is heavy. I'm tired. Oh, this is heavy. I need a break. Oh, this is heavy. I just need a stress reliever. Oh, this is heavy. I'm so sick of these kids. Oh, this is heavy. I'm so sick of my job. Oh, this is heavy. I'm so sick of myself. Oh, that's a whole revelation. And we want the weight of the crown and we want the glory of the crown, but we don't want to carry the weight of it. Mm-mm. And the higher we go in our callings, the heavier that crown gets. Mm-hmm. Oh, this. <laughs> Told you I was coming for y'all's edges. <laughs> <laughs> so in thinking about all that we've said and from going through that situation, how has God redefined you as a woman in your purpose and in your calling? Because that was a whole season of redefinition. You're still in it definitely still in it right i'm i'm still in it that's why i was like redefining like redefined redefining (laughs) i'm in i'm in the ing of this i'm in the thick of it you know just you know sometimes people don't talk about the chisel they don't talk about when god is chiseling at you you know, you think you you think that the refinement is being made and it's you're saying, God, please refine me or try me by fire. You know, mm-hmm. the fire hurts. It's not I remember, I remember the fire hurts. I remember the revelation in February. On my birthday, I got sick. I wasn't sick with COVID. I was sick with acute bronchitis. But before I got sick, sick. I was literally standing over my fireplace and I was getting cold. Mm. I was getting colder. I said, God, now I know we're in a season of the pandemic, but what is going on here? What are you about to do to me in this season? On my birthday, February 4th, I remember getting chills. And I couldn't eat. I wanted to jump in the fire. That's how cold I was. And I was coming down. And I said, you're about to try me this year, aren't you? Mm. Because see, the thing thing about it is, is that sometimes God lets something manifest in the physical to show you the, the spiritual side of it. So being chiseled is going to hurt. Being refined sometimes is going to hurt. Because some of that hurt comes from sacrifices. Some of the hurt comes from trying to, to, to stretch a muscle that you've never stretched. Have you ever worked out and you're like, woo, I didn't even know that that muscle existed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're thinking, let me go home and take some pain medicine. Let me go home and soak in this Epsom salt. And you're thinking all of these things, oh, I need to take off tomorrow because man, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Well, I don't think actually, I'm going to do myself a better one. I'm not going back to that workout. How about that? God, stop chiseling on me. When you ask God to stop chiseling on you, what are you, what are you really asking God to stop in your life? Because it's not just stopping your, your calling. You're stopping everybody else's calling. That's behind you. That's connected to you. Your because crown you is connected to other crowns. There you go. Your crown is connected to other crowns. Somebody once 
uh, prophesied this, and they said uh, they kept making the, the the slip of saying Crown Salon Studios, and I said it's not it's not more than one. It's not. It's just one. It's just one. And they said no. I said it right. I was Praise like, okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. So when you talk about that level of refinement, now sitting in the studios. I was like, okay. Yeah, refinement always brings you to a place of expansion. expansion. The cutting away, the chiseling, the redefinition, the refining, the redefining, it's taking away all of the lesser that you don't need to make room for what you do need for your next level. And then we forfeit our crowns and we forfeit our process. Mm -hmm. And my process and my crown is connected to other women. Mm. my god so what would you tell what advice would you give to a woman who's in that season right now who just endured a betrayal um she's in that process of healing and she was in a relationship that she thought was going to the distance it was going to the altar and now she finds herself and she wants to quit her process her crown is getting real heavy and she wants to throw it down she wants to go and get out there on Tinder and just know hmm. the pain on a rebound. <laughs> what would you tell her? Come on now. <laughs> I don't even have to hesitate with this because God's been priming me and I didn't know what it was used for, but I do know now. Portrayal can feel like death. Yeah. And if we reflect on the fact that you can't say, well, I, I, I've never died before. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have. If you've given your life to Christ, you know what that death feels like. If you haven't given yourself to Christ and you feel like you don't know what death feels like, you've experienced it probably from a loved one. You've, you've experienced it from betrayal. And you know that level of darkness that oversees you, that causes you to say, you know what? My extremity is about to shut down. Everything is about to shut down. And I'm going to tell you, let yourself die. Go ahead. Because then God can actually go find you. When Jesus rose Lazarus, and it was that four days that went by, all the corpse and everything that went through his whole body. He promised Mary that he was coming. Mm -hmm. That was a promise. It's still a promise. Jesus is coming. Just wait. He's going to weep. Okay. He, he's right there. He's coming for you in that death, even when it stinks. Jesus is still coming. Even when it stinks, he's still ready to rise you up, to put back. You know, when he said, uh, Lazarus, come forth, he literally, everybody knows the story, that if he didn't call out his name specifically, everybody would have got up. So when he calls out your name and your calling, he calls out Whitney Dion Spencer. He's calling me the the. the the God's dispenser of provisions, come forth, get up out of your bed, get up off that couch, stop not eating, comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face, get up and go to work and do the work that I told you to do for these women. That rising up out of you, you need to, to rise it up. What my advice would be to women is let yourself die so that God can come back and get you because no man can raise you up from the dead. Only God can raise you up from the dead. So when you get down to that level of death for yourself, all I can tell you is that God will come for you. Yes. It might not look like it. It's not going to look like what you think it's going to look like when he comes back for you. He might come back for you with a friend. That friend that, that warned you. <laughs> Here's my favorite friend, Holy Spirit. <laughs> He's a comforter. Yeah. He's a comforter. Mm. Nobody could comfort me like the Holy Spirit. Yeah, my friends were there, but I was still alone. I still had to process that alone. But because chance favors a prepared mind, and my prepared mind is that I've had history with the Holy Spirit. Come on now. 
so he can speak to me when nobody else was speaking to me. He can give me those scriptures that I've written down. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. I had faith I was going to be with this man. But all that was shattered. Because he didn't have any substance. So all of that saying was destroyed. And so I had to go back to what I knew. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Do you know how many times I read that? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. I was like, what evidence? What evidence, God? What evidence is it? The substance. What have you been doing? What, why do you even go to church? Why do you log in on your prayer group at, at 7 a.m. in the morning? Why do you get up and go work out? Why do you even sing this worship song if it's not the, the substance of the evidence? That's what I had to go back on. So when I was dying, mm. I went back. So any woman on here whose faith has been ruptured, whose crown looks like it's been stomped on, and you look like, you look at the jewels and you're like, God, I can't do nothing with this. And he turns beauty into ashes. From those ashes. Yes. There's beauty, diamonds are made out of the ashes. Mm. Oh, Jesus, and take that crown out of them ashes. What's going to be left is what's, what's been the substance that's hoped for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't need that other crown. That crown is dead, gone. Oh my it doesn't God. matter anymore. God's given you a new crown, something you've never worn before. You've never worn this new crown. This, this one's all nice and sparkling. You might say, but no, it's kind of tarnished. I got a baby out of it. That baby is a blessing. That baby is a blessing. Oh, you just don't understand, Wendy. I got four kids. Don't four kids? Wow, you got a blessing. But you don't understand, Wendy. I was, I was abused and you're a blessing. You're living to tell the tale, aren't you? Amen. You're a blessing. And when we can get that back into our bones and into our minds, ingrained into our minds, that's what I'm doing under this chair. Under, behind the chair, before I even talk about that hair, I want to know about the woman. Yeah. That's wearing that crown. That's wearing the crown. I could care less about the hair. The hair is dead. But it's the crown. Concerned with your mind. Yeah. Where your mind is at. And it sounds like God gave you a new crown in this process. Oh, he's so you're not, not wearing the you're not wearing the old crown that you were wearing when you were in that relationship. You got a whole new crown, boo. Whole new crown. A whole new crown. Whole new crown. <laughs> a whole new crown. Mm. That's a word right there. I could go somewhere with that. Mm. So my God, my God, I hope. Whoever's listening to this heard you said some. I'm gonna have to go back and listen. <laughs> we gotta go. My so we're getting ready to transition. We're gonna talk about this behind the chair. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I did do my little research. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked on your style seat and I was blown away and so blessed by the amazing reviews. Mm. And the most consistent word that came up to describe you was personable, attentive, and responsive. In addition to those characteristics, we're talking about business now. Wow. You're in the business of a woman's natural crown, but when you get behind a chair and you're on her hair, you know, now you're a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. You're still in, you're dealing with the, the natural crown and the mental crown when they share. Mm -hmm. But what other characteristics does it take to really be a really good salon owner and entrepreneur? 
you know, you, you're personable, you're attentive, you're responsible. You have this thing about the crown that you care about. What other characteristics of a good salon owner do you believe? Knowledge. Mm. Knowledge is definitely power. Yeah. It's, I think it's a phrase that I haven't heard too often in my space. Knowledge is power. And when I say that, I do mean knowledge of your products, knowledge of the trends, knowledge if the trends are healthy, knowledge of the chemicals that are in these products. Are they, are they any good for our hair? Um, I'm always up late at night sometimes um, doing my research on the, the latest trends to see where are we going? I know exactly where we're going. Mm -hmm. and it's not in more fantastic hair we're going to treatments because people have done so much to their hair and so much has happened in the little two years between okay. 2020 and 2022 that now people need treatments and so what my clients love about me is that I already know you're a successful woman but what you have failed to do is be successful in your hair. So I'm trying to change that narrative for you. I take what you put out here for everybody to see your, your success and try to line that up to where the unsuccess, the, the questions of Whitney, I've done everything. I've tried everything. Why is it not working? And so I believe that one, knowledge is power. Two, evidence is power too. Evidence. So go back to Hebrews 11, one, evidence of things seen, right? So what I love to do is show people what their damage is by using a white blank canvas, putting it behind their hair to show that dead, that all that length right there ain't really length. It's all ate up. It's mountains yeah. because sometimes people don't believe what's going on in the back of their head until I show them. So I take a lot of pictures. I ask my clients, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. So three, being goal oriented. So knowledge is power, evidence is power and goals mm -hmm. are power. Those three things is what I highlight in my studio. And that's why people keep coming back because they believe that Whitney is results driven, but she's results driven because she's invited me into her system and she's not stingy with her knowledge. Amen. Amen. And the reviews speak for themselves. <laughs> the reviews are amazing and you have all the knowledge and the goals, but you're also still attentive, personable, responsive, so many good things that they were saying. And so you're clearly called to this, not just also in that, that scientific and practical way, but in the sense of a ministry, going back to what we were talking to before, you're bringing all the passion, all of what God has healed in your life. You're mm -hmm. still in the heart healing journey. You're still in the redefining and refining journey. Mm -hmm. So you're combining all of that together, showing women how to take care of their natural crowns, but also working in their real, their, spiritual mental crowns so it's a ministry of beauty and love mm -hmm. so how does God really use you you know because a lot goes on when a woman sits in your chair and you're standing behind the chair how does God use you to minister Ooh, women? um so I have a huge big screen tv and one thing that I love to do is invite people with using their all their five senses. So when you come into the studio, you see the nice, pretty environment. You see the pretty curtains. You'll see the pretty ring lights on. Sometimes they're dimmed. So if I kind of can hear it in their voice that they need that calmness today, I lower the lights. Um, I play soft music. I love my Christian music and I love my smooth you know, jazz music or just something soothing mm -hmm. because we wear a lot on our shoulders. Yeah. And um, we're inviting them in with the steam. So my process of, of me preparing for the woman mm -hmm. is 
I prepare the atmosphere. I believe that it must smell good. People, first thing they notice, well, it smells good in here. It smells expensive because just like this conversation, it's expensive. These words are expensive. So this atmosphere must exude that. It must smell, it must look, it must feel. You must feel like you are getting ready to enter into a luxurious state of mind, body, and soul. So that when you go back out there, whatever job that you didn't think you could get, you can get it now. Whatever husband that you didn't feel like was going to be attracted to you, you can get them now. Don't, don't get it twisted, y'all. I've been hurt, but that don't stop them from hitting that inbox. I just ignore it. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm beautiful from the inside out. Okay. There's, there's no doubt in that. So my job is to make other women feel beautiful too. There's a lot of hurt women that come in here and I can almost feel their self-esteem where they are. They might be on a good status at work. They might be good supervisors, good presidents, good um, teachers, lawyers, doctors, nurses. And then in here, something else. It's like, where was that woman? But guess what? That's not my job to ask. I want them to be fully transparent. So I have this huge mirror. You see a whole body, okay? Some that's like, ooh. And others, it's like, yeah, this, yeah, that, that needed to be worked on. But the most important thing that I love about this mirror is you also get to see me. I'm right here with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm right here with you. You don't have to face that mirror alone. You don't, we don't have to, to sit here. We we're in a working stage now. I can work with this because now I'm moving your crown as a status. See crown is a status. Mm -hmm. It is a status. And what I'm trying to do with these women is change the narrative that's been written by the history of their family, the history mm -hmm. of their culture the history of whatever religious background they're from. I, get, I have women all over the world. I can officially say I have women all over the world. White, Black, Cuban, Asian, Korean. All over. I never thought that I would be sitting here saying I have people from different states, Texas, Oklahoma, Florida, uh, Washington, DC, Nebraska, Hawaii. All and sometimes, you know, some people be like, okay, I have two, I have three. What's, what, what, what is it when, when be like, oh, it's a fluke when you do it one time. It's on purpose when you do it twice. So yeah. it's not cocky. It's the confidence that God gives me. It's the confidence. Amen. You know, the, the evidence of my work is superseding itself. So some people, my thing of it is, is I'm working to where you can identify these crowns now. You be like, oh yeah, she went to Whitney. That's yeah. Whitney. That's what I'm working yeah. on. You know, that's what you're working on. Yeah. That's what I'm working on. That's a Whitney Amen. crown. That, that's that is Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's so much deeper than just I'm working on your hair, coming in and breathing in and breathing out. You're making a whole experience. And so that's the ministry that you provide to women and elevating, uplifting their crowns. Mm -hmm. So important. So important. So we're getting ready to wind this out down. And I'm going to ask one of my favorite questions. If you could go back and give 18 year old Whitney Spencer some advice, what would you tell her? Don't do it. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, 18 year old Whitney, that is so funny because I actually think that was the turning point. That was the moment that I was deciding, do I go chemistry or do I go cosmetology? I remember I went off of history. History said, go to school, get your degree. I would do it the same way I'm doing it now. Because when I learned 
the level of discipline that it takes to get a degree, that's what I applied when I went to cosmetology school. Because now I'm coming in as a non-traditional student. But what I attained as a non-traditional student, because I already had the discipline of getting a really high level degree, I could say, God, I literally did this. What does he say? Um, I forgot what the, the, the scripture is, but uh, write it down and make it plain so the heralds can run with it. I did that. I wrote it big and plain. I'm going to be on the dean's list. And under the dean's list at uh, cosmetology school, I went to Paul Mitchell. You had to be specializing in cutting, coloring, men's haircut, extensions, makeup. And I think there might've been one more thing. I had so many accolades running out that door. That was not a fantasy. I already had made a commitment with God that I was going to do my absolute best. And when you say the best, the first of everything went to him. Everything during that season. I went you to school. Hours. You lived out Hebrews 11. One. For real, for real. For you real, for that real. vision and made it plain. And it wasn't seen yet. It wasn't seen. I just wrote it down. I said, I'm going to be on the dean's list. And when you go to the Paul Mitchell School, you see right there, my name is on a plaque. Whitney Spencer, dean's list recipient. I think the 31st one. And that whole year, I had attained all of the things and some to get myself on that list. And it wasn't so much that I was doing it to be a show off. I was, no, let's not, let me, let me make myself very clear. This was a promise to God to maximize myself, my, my body, to my calling. I said, if you're going to call me into doing something where the wind is going against me, I'm going against my mom's wishes. She had already paid for my degree. I'm going against what I know as a, as a person. I'm going against what it means to be um, a woman. And then you have a career, you have access to all these good career opportunities and you turn them down. I'm going against all of that. I'm going against what, God, what the world said to do what God said. And that is the power that I would tell 18 year old Whitney is tune it out. Go with what God tells you to do. What God tells you to do, if it's God's will, then it's God's bill. That's what I would tell 18-year-old Whitney. Come on, do what God called you to do. And you said that you wouldn't change the order because you said that you would still, the discipline you learned getting that degree in chemistry, was it a degree in chemistry? Mm -hmm. Yes. The discipline learned to do that, you took that same work ethic to cosmetology. And now it worked, it complements. It complements. It complements. Now, I'm going to tell you one last point about this. When I was getting my degree as a chemist, I remember being the only Black woman and the only Black mm. walking that stage. And I remember getting a handshake from all the professors. And at that moment sitting there, because I was actually in the days because I had actually still had a paper to write, to turn in when I was getting my degree, I didn't understand what I just did. You didn't understand the weight of that. That was a crown by itself. That was a crown by itself. Come on, I did that stuff. alone. I did that alone in terms of some of times the level of, of status that you have to go through is gonna be a walk alone. So God had already done this as a chemist, because he made me see that where I was going was mounting me up like an eagle, like Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. Mounting me up, spreading me out, yes. letting me fly, Come letting me soar. Just, you know, an eagle lives a very lonely life. You can't, but, get, you can't, their eagles don't hang with chickens clucking and the clucking and scratching around on the ground. Come man, on, what? 
can't be like they don't. Chicken, clucking, and quacking. <laughs> and quacking and clacking and blacking. I mean, you. No, 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 no. Oh, buzzards and chickens and turkeys. No. You didn't call me to be. You got a crown. Hey, man. Call me just to do that. <laughs> right? Mm. So I, I would also tell 18 year old Winnie to get a mentor. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Get a mentor. I, I definitely can say that I didn't do a lot of research in mentorship and I probably would have been in, in a doctoral program for real. You would have been because I still feel like I'm smart enough for one. <laughs> I think so too. I think you could be doc you you'll be Dr. Spencer or another Ooh. last name, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So as you know, this is the Well Centered Woman podcast. And to be centered means to be balanced at peace, emotional, and spiritual equilibrium. You know, we gotta have that to keep that to hold that crown, the weight of that crown. But that crown got to be centered, right? <laughs> you can't have no wopsided crown, right? No, it's so all about balance. What, what do you do? What is your daily practice and habit to keep your crown centered? Hmm. Wake up early. Wake up early before the sun comes up. Literally, it's dark when I wake up. And if, and that that is depending on the season. So times might change. And I have to change the time that I get up because it's important to do the things that you need to do in the dark. A lot of people take that as a negative connotation. It's actually a really deep spiritual connotation that do what you need to do in the dark first with God. That, so you, people leave that part off with, with God. God. Yeah. So when you wake up early, so this is your quiet prayer time exercise exactly what is your practice if you don't so know. my practice is wake up talk to god read something from god might be the bible might be a, a devotional or both um spend some quiet time not saying anything so that i can listen to my surroundings because i work in all five senses Whatever comes to me doesn't happen by coincidence. Um, exercise, go to the workout classes. I, I can say, honestly, I don't go to every one. My body gets tired, I'm still working, chiseling. Um, get on my, my faith prayer calls um, with my group. And then, and, and leaving my phone on silent, not taking those calls, Giving God that time in the morning is very, very important. And still, for me, it's still working on that habit, you know. Um, and then I do all of the contacts, getting back to the emails, getting back to the text messages at an appropriate business time. My business hours are from 930 to 6. So guess what? I usually answer them from 930 to 6. Anything after that time is about the balance. Because if I'm constantly giving my clients my 10 o'clock time, I'm supposed to be in the bed. I got to get up at 4.30. Hello. Your crown will be wopsided. Man, what? Like, we're going back to this again. I'm, I can't do that. I have to make sure that the time that I give to God first mm -hmm. will be me putting on my full armor. And I can honestly say, I'll just be real. I don't get it right every morning. And that's okay. I pray for that grace. Okay. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, you know, a lot of people say, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be um, um, a thousandaire. How about that? Let's work on that. Let's start there first. Can Let's start there first. thousand dollars, Will. Yeah. Come on now. Amen. It's real. Amen. It's, it's a real place. It's really real. You so, got to be a, a million, before you can be a millionaire in your mind, you need to get the order, order, order your steps. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that, I mean, That's it. I, know, I wanted to tell an entrepreneur out there who's wearing that whole millionaire shirt. I wear a millionaire shirt too, but the thing of it is I can't wear that every day because that's a millionaire crown. That crown is heavy. And that's also another lonely, that's a different level of loneliness. Yeah. Or eagles fly alone. Eagles are not clicking in the, in the, with chickens and buzzards and turkeys to fly high. 
and wear a heavy crown. You you walking heavy already, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my. So as we close this out, as we close this out, tell us about your latest projects, anything special you have going on, what you want our uh, listeners to know about you, because I'm going to have all, all of your links are in the show notes and everything. So they will have all of your information. But is there anything in particular and how they can contact you? Um, well, first, they can contact me through my Crown and Crown website. That's Crown and Crown, Crown A Crown dot com. You can also reach me at styleseat.com slash Whitney Spencer. Um, you can also contact me uh, via email and Instagram. My Instagram tag is Whitney the Beauty Chemist, or you can hit up Crown Salon Studio on Instagram and Facebook. Um, what was the other thing that you asked me? You got anything, any projects, anything special going on or anything that you want people to know about? I do have a very special project that I'm working on. And I think that it's going to come to fruition because it's one of those ah, moments. I'm working on a book. I yes. am working on a book. <laughs> okay. Should I even tell them the title? <laughs> it's up to you as you're comfortable, as you're led. Ooh. They need to follow you on Instagram so that when you release it, yes. they will know. So they you guys, you're listening, click the link, follow her, stay connected so you will know. Because I know that book is going to be so full of wisdom. It is. So it is much. It's going so. to be wisdom and hilarious all at the same time. All at the same time. Amen. <laughs> well, I have enjoyed this conversation. It has been a blessing. I can't wait to go back and listen. <laughs> listen to this again. It has blessed me. So thank you so much for being here. It's been a blessing. Deb. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Tanika. This has been more than a blessing. I, I definitely feel you are about to experience a different level of following just because of this alone. I receive it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Blessings in abundance and God is good. We going to finish this on up. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye, you guys.